Good evening, everyone. I hope you all are doing fine. My name is Pooja Devedi. Welcome to my class, The Daily Current Affairs, which are a one-stop solution for not only your pre, but also the mains examination and any other examination in which current affairs are important. From the perspective of GS papers, it is important that you follow this class on a daily basis. Do not worry about the notes. It is provided through my Telegram channel, Pooja Devedi UPSC. If you have any queries, you can talk to me on my Instagram and follow me on my threads. These are the various events that we have to cover. Let's talk about the first one. With respect to the road accidents in India 2022 report, consider the following statements. It is published by the Niti Aayog on an annual basis every year. This year marks an increase of 11.9% in accidents, but a reduction is registered by 9.4%. So what do we have to see? Which of the statements given above is or are correct? See, this is a trick question and many of you have fallen for this trick. I've seen the comments. The first statement is incorrect because it is not the Niti Aayog that publishes this report, but the Ministry of Road, Transport and Highway on an annual basis. And the data on which this report is premised is collected by the various police departments on, of states and union territories. So first is incorrect. This year, there is an increase in the number of accidents by 11.9%, almost 12%. And also an increase in the number of fatalities. Here it is written reduction. So you see UPSC will trick you like that. You do not have to be tricked. D, neither one nor two will be the correct answer. The annual report on road accidents in India 2022, it has been published. And the data is collected on a calendar basis. The standardized format is given by the United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific. Under its project, Asia Pacific Road Accident Data Based Project. Okay. And there is a total of the report says that there is a total of more than 4 lakh road accidents for the year 2022 in different states and union territories. And this is an increase of 11.9%. Also, 9.4% increase in fatalities as well as injuries, 15.3% as compared to the year 2021. Under the category traffic rules violation, the major killer has been overspeeding. Over speeding because of this, people have died, and 71.2% is the percentage of the killings. Over 10,000 road accidents occurred due to the drivers, uh, due because of the drivers were being influenced by alcohol. Accidents due to jumping red light has also increased. As you see, in 2022, it has become 4,021, which is an increase of 82.55%. Follow the traffic regulations, please. Moving on, with respect to Sardar Vallabhai Patel, consider the following statements. He presided over the session of the Indian National Congress, which was called upon to ratify the Gandhi Irwin Pact. Post independence, he was responsible for the home, states, and information and broadcasting portfolios. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? Last day, that is 31st of October, was the birth date of Sardar Vallabhai Patel. There is no record of his birth day, but we generally uh, celebrate it on 31st of October. Why? because of the usage of his matriculation certificate. Whenever he posted a matriculation certificate, in that we got, uh, you, you know, this date reflected, 31st of October as his birth date. No birth certificate, okay? Then he presided over the session of the Indian National Congress. This was the Karachi session. And this session was done to ratify the Gandhi Irwin Pact in 1931. So this is correct. And yes, post-independence, he had a huge role to play. He was their deputy prime minister. Plus, he had the charges of home, states, and also information and broadcasting. So, both these statements are correct. Both in one and two are the correct answer. He was born in Nandit, Gujarat, one of the six, child, uh, six children. And he was the first home minister and deputy prime minister of India. His ideology reflects in the Atmanirbhar Bharat initiative, which seeks to make India self-reliant. Because of him only, we get India as it is today. He also headed certain constitutional constituent assembly committees such as the advisory committee on fundamental rights, committee on minorities and tribals and excluded area and even provincial council committee, uh, constitution committee. See, UPSC can also ask us about the different committees. It can give you a match the following kind of question. Who had the, who was at the helm of the committee and the name of committee. So you have to match it. Which of the pairs given above is or are correct. So remember. Advisory Committee on Fundamental Rights, Committee on Minorities and Tribal and Excluded Areas and Provincial Constitution Committee. Why do I tell you all this? Because when we were preparing, nobody told us all this. So that is why it is important to know certain things, you know. You should have a guide that can tell you why any information is important. I can just give you information and tell nothing as well. 
but that's not how we roll at study IQ IS English. Okay, moving on. Uh, he was the first person to understand the importance of farmers. So he integrated the farmers' cause in the Kheda Satyagraha of 1918 and Bardoli Satyagraha of 1928 with the National Freedom Movement. And that's still, uh, you know, uh, this particular integration still resonates with us. Look at the farm protests, you know. And in the Bardoli Satyagraha only, during that period of time, the women of Bardoli named him Sardar, that means the chief of the movement. So there, you know, another information about him. The Statue of Unity, which was inaugurated on 31st of October 2018, marks the, marked the 143rd birth anniversary of Sardar Patel. And this was a tribute to him. It is the ta tallest statue in the world, almost twice the size of the, uh, twice the height of the Statue of Liberty. January 2020, it was added to the eight wonders of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Keep that in mind. Which of the following is not an associated location? Vis-a-vis -vis the Sinai Peninsula, Gulf of Aqaba, Sharm el Sheikh, Mount Catherine, Lake Nasser. Do you remember a conference of parties also held at was held at Sharm el Sheikh? Which COP? Tell me in the comment segment. Sharm el Sheikh is in Egypt, Sinai Peninsula. Even Gulf of Aqaba and Mount Catherine, but not Lake Nasser. Okay, so Lake Nasser will be the correct answer. Recently, we saw that the Rafah crossing has been opened for Palestinian refugees or we can call them Gazan refugees to cross over to Egypt. And this is for a limited period of time. And there, this comes amidst this particular news that there is a, uh, there is a kind of news that Israel is trying to move all the Gazans to the Sinai Peninsula. And this comes amidst that news. Although Rafah border crossing has been opened for a small period of time, not forever. And here is the Sinai Peninsula. Look, it, it's like an inverted triangle. Okay, here is the Gulf of Suez. Here is the Gulf of Aqaba. Between Saudi Arabia and the Sinai Peninsula, Gulf of Suez between many countries, uh, between Egypt and, uh, of course, Egypt's mainland here in Africa and the Asian part of Egypt, that is the Sinai Peninsula. Then we have, beg your pardon, then we have the Sharm el Sheikh over here. Here is the Sharm el Sheikh. Okay. And here is Mount Catherine. Here is Mount Sinai. Most of the portion in the north is desert, and one third of the southern region is mountainous in nature. There are many wadis, but rivers are not perennial. That means Gazans may not get water in at some point of time if they start living here. It's very sparsely located, also. Um, you know, not most uh, of the people wouldn't want to stay here. Now the correct answer is Lake Nasser. Moving on. With respect to India-Bangladesh relations, consider the following statements. India is Bangladesh's second largest trading partner. Bangladesh and India are members of the SARC, BIMSTEC and IORA. Maitri Setu has been constructed over the Feni River, which is an international river. So what do we have to see? How many of the statements given above is or are correct? The first statement is definitely correct. India is Bangladesh's second largest trading partner. In South Asia, Bangladesh is India's largest trading partner. Okay, Bangladesh and India are members of many inter international and multilateral forums such as BIMSTEC, SARC and IORA. So this is correct, this is correct. And Maitri Setu was built over the Feni River. It uh, is between India and Bangladesh. That is why an international river. So 1, 2 and 3, all 3 are correct. All 3 will be the correct answer. Recently, 3 important key projects have been inaugurated. Uh, between India and Bangladesh, Agartala Akhara Rail Project, Khulna Mongla Project, uh, and Unit 2 of the Maitri Super Thermal Power Plant in Rampal. So, these two are connectivity projects. I have already discussed this in detail in today's class. Do watch that. Okay. And the Khulna Mongla port line is also a connectivity project. This is energy security. Bangladesh shares a border with India via five states West Bengal, Assam, Meghalaya, Tripura, and Mizoram. The Agartala capital of Tripura is connected with Akhara and Bangladesh and then via Dhaka, Agartala will also find a way to Kolkata. So this is a connectivity project. It is going to boost tourism, trade, connectivity, etc, etc. Okay. And I have covered this in detail. That is why it is important for you to go and watch it because in international relations, definitely questions can be formed. Moving on. India's largest trading partner in South Asia for 2021-2022, India is Bangladesh second largest trading partner largest export market in Asia. Okay, bilateral trade has grown 14% despite COVID-19. That means we have grow, we have started to grow our relationship 
showing the importance of India to Bangladesh and Bangladesh's importance to India. We are also going to have a comprehensive economic partnership agreement soon. Maitreya Setu is a bridge that has been constructed over the Feni River in 2021. Here it is. You can see Indian part and Bangladesh part and this is the Feni River. Alright. And it will connect Sarbhum in Tripura to Ramgarh in uh, Bangladesh. Padma Setu is another one. Then we have Mitari Express which was operationalized in 2022 which is a bi-weekly for bi-weekly journeys in order to connect Bangladesh and India. Sarna religion was recently seen in the news. The followers of Sarna faith believe in praying to nature, Buddha, the Holy Cross, animals. The correct answer is option A that is nature. Jharkhand CM has written to the Prime Minister seeking recognition of the Sarna religious sect, uh, Sarna religious code for tribals. Followers of Sarna, they believe they have this particular faith that nature is the one for them. The Holy Grail is Jal Jungle Zameen. That means when they are worshipping the nature, nature is protecting them in return. Jharkhand has 32 tribal groups of which 8 are particularly vulnerable. We know that there are 75 PVTJs. So Jharkhand also has 8. While many adhere to Hinduism, some have also converted to Christianity. They are wanting that their code, you know, their practice should be preserved. That is why they are very desperate to get a code to preserve religious identity. Moving on, with reference to the disqualification of an MP, a member of the parliament, consider the following statements. A person shall be disqualified if he holds any office of profit under the government of India or the government of any state. Either it could be government of India or the government of any state. A person shall be disqualified if he is of unsound mind and stands so declared by a competent court. It's not like if I say that X is not in their mind anymore. That's not what holds you know, a definition for an unsound mind. It shouldn't be done by a competent court. A person shall be disqualified if he has voluntarily acquired the citizenship of foreign state. So, how many of the statements, how many of the above are reasons for disqualification? Actually, all three are. All three will be the correct answer. Article 102 deals specifically with disqualifications of MPs from the parliaments. Uh, and if any, if uh, any person does that, they can be disqualified. If he holds an office of profit under the government of India or the government of any state or any other office declared by the parliament by no law not to disqualify its holder. If he is of unsound mind and stands so declared by a competent court. If he is an undischarged insolvent. If he is not a citizen of India or has voluntarily acquired citizenship of for foreign state. If I acquire a citizenship of some other nation, my citizenship will be terminated automatically or is any or is under any acknowledgement of allegiance or adherence to foreign state. If he is so disqualified by or under any law made by the parliament, also under the 10th schedule, the anti-defection law. Moving on. This is a practice question for you. The L69 groupings were in the news. It refers to which of the following? You have to tell me about it in the comment segment. Let me take the names of those students who have answered my previous question correctly so that you can answer this as well. So yes, D was the correct answer. Gopesh has answered it correctly. Well done, Gopesh. Mm. So, Sonu KR has given us information and I hope on the basis of that you were able to understand that D was the correct answer. Mindful Shubh has answered it correctly. Ria has answered it correctly. Ankit has answered it correctly. Pratik, Satish, um, Official Dhanavat, thank you so much. It's D, why you guys have written B? That is why I tell you to read the statements carefully. Suresh has answered it correctly. So, few, few of you have answered it correctly. Keep in mind, you do not have to be tricked. Thank you so much for watching.